one in three petite Syrah. And this is from Fair Play. My name is Catherine Fallis, and I was the fifth woman in the world to become a master sommelier. I love tasting wine uh, day and night, and it's just, it's, it's what I do for a living. So thank you for joining me as we taste through uh, Tenerel Cellars wine, which is called One in Three Petit Syrah. And this is from Fair Play, which is in the Sierra Nevada. And it is, again, uh, like many of the wines from Tenerol Cellars, a wine that's in a very warm growing area, but at a very high elevation. So you're getting that nice combination of fruit that's lavishly ripe. It's opulently ripe. It's as, it's as ripe as it would ever want to be. And at the same time, because there are cool breezes in the evenings, it's relaxed and refreshed and that it brings a nice balance to kind of an opulent fruity style of wine, but with this undercurrent of freshness and tartness from natural acidity. And that's really hard to find in a lot of wines that are grown in warm places like California, for example, and other parts of the world. When you think about Europe, you know, there's there are very few gra grapes that are getting kind of lavishly ripe. They're struggling every year just to ripen at all in many parts of Europe. And so in California, we have the advantage of we can ripen almost anything we want almost any year, but we have to be careful not to go beyond because then you get, you know, to the point where it's too ripe and there's nothing to keep it in, in balance. Petite Syrah as a grape, this is an interesting grape because a lot of people think it's Syrah, but it's not, even though it sounds like it. It sounds like little Syrah. It's actually a grape called Durif. And this is actually, uh, you could call it one of America's favorite grapes along with Zinfandel. Petite Syrah is really popular and it's normally um, aged 100% in American oak. So we, we're making an American style wine in American oak. And Petite Syrah as a grape is kind of sweet and uh, jammy and sultry. It's got notes of cherry cobbler and notes of blackberry jam and even fig bar or fig Newton cookie. So you get those nice baked fruits in it. And then with the American oak, you're getting uh, sweetness, you're getting mint, you're getting cinnamon and nutmeg and even a little fennel seed. But this wine is made in a blend of about half American oak and the other half is French oak. So it's the oak in this wine, the, the wine that the, the barrels that this wine was aged in is not 100% American. So it's a little bit more restrained, a little bit more subtle and a little bit more kind of in the background. So when you smell and taste this wine, wow, it's just like, yes, I want that right now. And I don't care that I'm supposed to wait for my entree to arrive. I'm drinking it now because it smells so amazing. So it's really got this kind of curb appeal, if you will, right away, people wanna buy the house. You know, it's just like, yeah, I'll take that. And, uh, but when you get it on your palate, when you, you know, after looking at the, the deep inky color and smelling that warm, jammy, kind of baked fruit sensation, and then when you put it on your palate, you'll feel that it's a little bit Tart. It's got this kind of undercurrent of tartness and freshness, maybe a little raspberry note to it, or even a little pomegranate, which counterbalances those big opulent baked fruits. And then it's got the cinnamon and the nutmeg and the, you know, the mint from the oak as well. So it's all kind of playing together. And this, this is okay. This is what happens when you have a wine like this because it's really rich. It's also a little tart at the end. And then you have the uh, kind of the chewy texture from the timing oak barrel and they're all playing together nicely. Uh, you know, the wine is young. If you don't like this so much, have it with a steak au poivre, you know, peppercorn cream sauce with your steak or plant-based um, dish, um, adding fat to your dish you know, even butter, just put a pat of butter on that steak or whatever it is you've got cooking uh, will help to take that kind of chewy edge off. You can also just put this in a carafe maybe for an hour, just pour it in and let it sit there and swirl every so often. You don't need a candle or any of that. 
Um, that's for older wines that have little particles in the bottom of the bottle. And just let it breathe. You can also pour a little bit into a giant glass. So the biggest glass you have, pour a little bit of wine, swirl it around and just let it sit there. Another thing you can do with wines like this is you can let them sit. So put the cork back in, have a glass tonight, put the cork back in, go back to it tomorrow, it'll be so much more open. And by the third day, it'll be as if you've aged it in your cellar for five or 10 years. So that's what we do at Planet Grape Wine Review. I call it the Grape Goddess three-day rule, where we open the wines, we taste them as is, day one, no treatment, uh, no kind of preservers, no gadgets. We just put the cork back in and go back to it the next day and the third day as well to see how the wines progress as if they were aging in a cellar over time. Petite Syrah is really, really delicious if you can, if you're a fan of lamb, for example, really nice with lamb or game, really nice with uh, uh, even uh, peppercorn studded cheeses to get that nice little peppery aspect to it. Um, Petite Syrah would be delicious with a giant tray of grilled vegetables if you're going, you know, the vegetable plant-based route. Uh, and it's delicious just on its own.